at around the 20th, uh, the, the first of the month of December. He started gathering everything together, started prepping it for the junkyard. And I remember, I didn't realize what we were doing because my old man, he, he would collect copper wire and we burn the wire. Sometimes we have a wire skinning party. He take all the wire down to the uh, to the recycling place mm. and get money. Give it to my mom. My mom would go. She disappeared for a couple of hours, a few hours. And my old man always had this saying: I, if I ask for something any time around November or December, he'd always say, "Christmas right around the corner. Christmas right around the corner." And I'm like, "Okay, I'm young, but I, you know, I can go around the corner and look for Christmas. I'd get on my bike or whatever looking for Christmas." And we never filed it, of course. But one day, my sister, what a smart ass, uh, went in my mama. My mama had a cat. My dad, they had a Cadillac. And my mom, my sister knew how to open the trunk up from the glove compartment and pop the trunk. And there was my GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip. And there were all our Christmas toys. Man. But that was, a, you know, it was cool, but it kind of blew the mystique off of Christmas. Because my grandmother lived on Manchester and Broadway, okay? And but anytime we go see my grandmama, we ride down Broadway. And going down Broadway as a kid, we, they, they, they'd have big Christmas decorations starting at about, I don't know, maybe about a century, okay? And the whole street would be lit up with big Christmas decorations. All the windows would have uh, snow in them and lights and stuff. And you felt like it was Christmas. You felt like it was Christmas. You could go to the neighborhood um, where I lived at. Um, at that time, I lived off of El Segundo and, and Main Street. But over off of Avalon, between Avalon and Central, El Segundo and 135th Street, all the neighborhood block clubs got together, man, and decorated the shit out the neighborhood, dude. It'd be beautiful. Like, you, you, you'd be going through a whole sea of light. Black folks was doing this. It would be a sea of lights on both sides, and they, the block clubs would have all the, the stuff laid out. And even after um, we got grown, my sister, where she lived at in Inglewood, they all the block clubs, all the avenues do the same thing from Crenshaw, I mean, from, from Van Ness to Crenshaw, uh, from Manchester to like 97, I think it was. It'd be the same thing. People just go up and down the streets just looking at all the Christmas decorations. And all the neighbors would be doing different things, you know, with the so Santa Claus in the driveway, Christmas lights. And I never forget, Christmas lights in my house was a mess. His my old man, he, he would always throw them in a the, in the bucket. Now you got to straighten them some bitches out, okay? Man, you straighten out the Christmas lights. Took you about two hours just to get them straight. Then you had them old school Christmas lights. If one went out, the whole bulb went out, okay? They was hooked up in series. If one went out, everything went out. So you had to test them and all that kind of stuff. And we had a Christmas tree. We got from Sears and Roebuck. Now, you know, I'm old. Talk about Sears and Roebuck. Talk about Sears, period, is old. But Sears and Roebuck, that's a whole nother, no, another kind of old. And the, 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 the tree was made out of aluminum. Okay? It was aluminum. And, uh, like, it was made out of, like, a, uh, like, um, party paper, aluminum party paper with silver, and you had the, the sticks, you had a pole in the middle, with holes in at an angle, and you stick the poles in the thing, and, and depending on the length of the poles, the tree would go up like, like a regular tree, but so the poles were kind of tapered, I mean, the, 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 uh, the stems were kind of tapered, they were all made out of metal, and you put them in a little sleeve, take out the sleeve, and it was numbered and coded or whatever, you put this one in that one, that one in this one, this one in You get the tree, and we hang all the little bulbs on there and put the little lights on there. And then you put the little rotating, the little rotating multiple colored light on it. And, it would, and sit in, always sit in the window of the house. Always sit in the front window. We had a big picture window in our house. And that's where Christmas tree went, dude. And that was a major event. And uh, include, not, not, not to mention, um, you had to be kind of special to put that last little ornament on the tree, dude. And it just felt like Christmas at my house as a kid, dude. I don't know no bad Christmases. As a kid, I can't tell you no horror stories about not getting no toys, not getting some... I can't do that. My old man dealt me a different kind of hand, and uh, I've always kind of followed his tradition. 
my mom, you know, my, my, my family, it's kind of weird because there is no, there's no two groups in my family that have the same religion. <laughs> All my family is something different, dude. I got cousins that's Christian. I got cousins Jehovah Witnesses. I got cousins that's Muslim. So nobody celebrates Christmas the same way. And even when we had family gatherings around Christmas, shit. You don't know. You might get your ass whooped just talking about what school you go to. Because we had, as Catholic school, we had Christmas going. Santa Claus was one way. And you know, witness they, they didn't believe in Santa Claus. As a uh, Muslim, that wasn't going to happen. As Christian, that was a different version. So, man, it's, you know, um, it's just, as a, as a young dude growing up, dude, I was telling uh, my kid, my son, the other day, I said, man, it don't feel it ain't it's the same what I grew up on, man. You know, and again, I've, and I've gotten over the Christmas as a as a as a grown man, but I would like to, and, and, and I understand this. I understand how it has become um, materialized and corporatized and all that kind of stuff. But the spirit of that time is so heartwarming because people want to give. And you, would, you wish you could bottle that shit up and spray it around for the whole 365 years a day, but that ain't possible. And that's the part I like the best, man. You know, just not, not so much the present, but just everybody, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And, you know, it just felt good. You know, it was a good, it was a good feeling, but eventually, as I got older, shit, uh, reality came in and shot me into the present. And, uh, you know, now eh, it, ain't, it ain't as big as it used to be for me. I, you know, I still do it for my grandkids. All my kids are grown. So I'm like, hey, you 18. Now nah, you on your own. Um, you know, we don't do a whole lot. Of, we don't do a whole lot. You know, me and my son was laughing. He said, Pop, what you want for Christmas? I said, son, what you want for Christmas? He said, about 50 bucks. I said, Pop, what you want? About 50 bucks. Said, it's a watch, okay? <laughs> it's a watch. And, you know, when you get old as I am, when people ask, what you want for Christmas? I don't need nothing, okay? I just need to stay, I just need to stay healthy, Doc. That's all I need. I just need to stay healthy. Um, you know, it is what it is, man. That was my Christmas. I mean, but I tell you what, though. As a young dude, I remember my dad was a, uh, he was a, uh, a very handy dude. Very handy. And I took, that's one thing I took after him. Well, I think I was about 10 or 12 years old, 10 or 11, maybe. And I built my first mini bike. We started building the mini bike right around October, I think it was. We bought the frame. The frame was like $28, $29 at the mini bike frame shop. Came home, painted the frame, went to the lawnmower shop. My daddy did business at. They sold a three horsepower motor for like $20. Put the motor on there, got it fired up. Went back to the mini bike shop a couple weeks later, bought the front tire. A few weeks later, bought the back tire. Then my old man made me a seat. Went back to the mini bike shop a couple weeks later, bought the throttle. And I had a, a metal brake pad. It was like a like an old school, uh, just like a piece of metal rubbed against the back tire. And the last thing I needed was uh, a chain. And my dad was in uh, Blackjack with my uncle and uh, he won me the money to buy the chain with. Man, that was, a, you know, he, that was like, I might have been around shit before before Christmas. I had my chain for Christmas, okay? And the clutch, I had to get a clutch, I had to get a clutch, I had to get a clutch and a chain. So that was like $14. That was a lot of money back then, dude. I think my mini bike might have cost me, might have cost my dad maybe, I don't know, maybe $7,500 to bill back then. Tires, you know, tires, everything. And all I did, everybody else had bicycles. I had mini bikes. Okay. I had a mini bike, you know, and when, when you think about those things, man, at one point in time, I had two mini bikes. Okay. I got, uh, I started making a little money and pop bought me a mini bike cost $300. Mama had a fit. But yeah, Doc, these are the kind of birthday, how the Christmas, I, Christmas I remember, man, it was a different spirit. And, and that's what I said to, to, to told my uh, partner earlier, I don't feel the spirit. I don't feel the the the, uh, the joy. People say happy holidays. I might not feel that shit. You know, I uh, went to a Christmas thing of the day in Compton, and that was cool. Because I realized then, 
Christmas is definitely for kids. When you see gangsters in line for their kids, they got their kids lined up. They got their they got their uh, they uh, penalties on essays, blood script, whatever they got, whatever whatever attire they uh, regalia they have, they got it on. But they there for the kids. You don't hear for my kids, long ago. So I'm saying, man, I'm, you know, I, I missed out on this stuff right here. They got toys, they, and Compton has has had at least. Four toy giveaways with another two or three planned this weekend. Uh, yeah, two or three planned this weekend. So I've been involved in a multiple toy giveaways and to see the kids' faces light up, man, it's just a cool thing. Now, you see how many people give for the kids. You know, that's a good thing. And I think that's 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 the new phase for me, just to uh, watch other people, watch youngsters enjoy Christmas. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, this year we tried something different with our family. And we sponsored a family who is less fortunate, and um, we went met at a hospital, uh, which was throwing the event, and we just gave them everything they asked for, man. And just to see the kids, you know, the kid, one of the kids was unfortunately um, is handicapped, and the, the mom is doing everything she can to just make it work in life, you know what I'm saying? And when you see those kids smile, bro, sh- that, that's it. That's all I needed for Christmas. I was like, I don't need shit for Christmas. I'm good. You know what I mean? So that's that's what gets you in the spirit, dog, is looking at kids open gifts who who need it, man. That's the main thing. You know, I'm kind of a weird dude, man. I um uh my chamber, we have a deal with the Compton uh every table restaurant. And every couple of days they'll call us up to they have they have food that's still good, but it's close to exp- expiration date. And as opposed to waiting till it expires to give it away, they'll give it away two days or a day early and me and my partner have been going out uh, taking turns in some cases dropping it off to homeless people and man to see a grown man thank you call you man you are an angel dude you are call you an angel or some shit like that man I mean cause folks be out there you know things ain't going but ain't going well for them Doc. you drop off a big old bag of uh, food all they gotta do is put it, stick it in the microwave or sometimes just start chewing it's 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 a it's a good feeling to be able to help somebody, uh, period. Not 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 because they only um, you know having a bad time right now. Just to be able to help people, period. Man, is a blessing to uh, it's a blessing within itself, dude. And like I said, we talk about grown folks who you know, hey man, if I pull up and I see a a, a, a mobile home, people out there park, you know, I pull up, hey man, y'all hungry? Yeah, man, and dude, they, they hit the truck. And um, I used to take pictures of them. I stopped doing that because, you know, you never know. Somebody might, somebody's life may change. They don't want nobody, man, nobody would know their situation. So it is what it is. Doc. It just feels good to be able to give, give people like that. Yeah, man. You know, earlier you mentioned G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. What were some toys that Lonzo saw on TV or saw in the newspapers around Christmas when you were a kid and, you know, you just wanted it? You was like, I got to have that. Like, what were some toys when you were a kid that were the shit? Let me check you right quick, okay? It was the Sears catalog was our shit, man. The Sears catalog. The Sears catalog was our uh, uh, Sears catalog was our shit for toys. I want this, I want this, I want this. Sears catalog and blue chip stamp catalog. My grandmother had the blue chip. My, my, my grandmother sold the blue. Uh, she sold Avon. I've never heard of blue chip stamps. What's that? Chip stamp. What's that? Oh man, blue chip stamp. Back in the day, blue chip stamps were like were like a reward program that you that they used back in the day. So when you go to the store, we had two types of stamps. You uh, when you go to the store, they would literally if you spend ten dollars, they would give you a certain per, certain percentage of your purchase in blue chip stamp. Blue chip stamp were regular. They were stamps. They were stamps. Okay, like a regular like a postage stamp. They were made by the SNH blue uh, blue chip SNH or blue chip. I'm sorry, and they were like a loyalty rep- a loyalty uh, program. So if you shopped at this store and they gave you blue chip stamps, after you collected so many blue chip stamps, you can put them in this book. To, depending on how many books you had, take this book to the redemption center, and at the redemption center, or to get get the catalog and take it to the redemption center, redemption center, and based on how many books you had, you can trade them in. Okay, you trade these uh, wall, and they had back then they had the good glue, 
And my mama, she would use, use a sponge, and sometimes she'd use a wet, a damp rag. But sometimes as kid, we just take a touch head across our tongue, and I take the whole eye, run across our tongue. And boy, you talking to my nigga talking funny. If you can love that glue on your goddamn tongue, your whole your whole pronunciation changed completely. But the excitement of finishing the book, we only did it with the with the. Uh, they had two types of stamps. They had individual. And they had like the big ones that uh, if you got five of those, you get a whole row. That was like it was like they was one one of these big stamps was good for a whole row. So I take the big row, run them across my tongue because I was too lazy to go out. You know, put them in the. Um, Get a sponge or whatever, and my sister then would dab them on the uh, damp tiles and put them on the book. They took a lot longer, but anyway, yeah, man, we shopped through the blue chip stamps, go to the catalog, and then they had the, actually the Sears catalog was shit or the Spiegel catalog. And back then, we only had two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen channels. So shit, you watching the news? Here come a, here come a commercial for Hot Wheels. You watching the news? And give me a little fat ass Santa Claus on, on the sh- on on the shit shaver, riding down the hill, hat looking like the looking like the Pillsbury Doughboy, or you you know you Saturday morning around Christmas time, all the bicycles are there, Doc, because you know you only had so many channels, so they had a captive audience when it came to advertising. And we sitting there, man, in front of in front of the uh, TV every time a uh, a swing commercial came on or a BB gun commercial. They sell BB guns on TV. They advertise Daisy BB guns on television like it wasn't shit. And I was a BB gun having son of a gun. As a kid, I had BB guns all my life, man. So, yeah, we had advertising. We was bum parted like everybody else. Uh, you had the newspaper, but we had mostly had catalogs. And that was my, my mama did most of us shopping through the catalog. The catalog, man. Damn. Okay. So we're going way back. Catalog be this thick. Yeah. Catalog be this thick. Y'all, y'all got to see my hand. My, cat, my catalog about that thick. Okay. And they had everything from car parts to uh, fishing gear, drawers, underwear, whatever you need, Sears had it. I'll tell you how big Sears was. Sears, um, the, the, the um, Compton Swap Meet, now the Walmart, used to be a Sears. Two stories. Yep. That was the that was the Sears. Okay. Yep. Sears was a huge catalog company uh, out of Chicago, man. And um, they sold they had retail stores everywhere. And you know, you buy you go to the catalog, you order something at the catalog, you pay for it. Sometimes back then you could pay stuff C O D. You could order it and pay the and pay UPS and they got to the door. You know that, did you? Damn, dude, that's crazy. Kids don't know about this nowadays, man. Yeah. You could order, you could order- you could order shit on uh, on from the Sears catalog and pay for it, uh, pay for it um, with the uh, um, at, and when the man picked it up, he would bring it back two or three times. You can give him cash. People was robbing the uh, sometimes the, the UPS man got robbed. You could give him a check, but if you pop the check, no check, cash only. UPS was collected. UPS would collect money and they dropped off packages. COD, cash on delivery. Damn, COD, dude. You know what? Uh, you mentioned Sears. Let's talk about department stores, Lonzo. I remember when I was a kid, 80s, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, going to the department store. And the department store in itself going was going to the department store was an event in itself. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, you know, we ate there, we shopped there. We saw my mom talk to people. I'd run around, go play with toys. It felt like we were there all day. You know what I'm saying? But rewind to when you were a kid, man, the the sure. department store, Sears, May Company, I mean, J.C. Penny and Company and all those, man. Talk to me about, you know what I'm saying, the day in the life of the Williams family going to the department store. Man, we lived, we lived down the, well, up, well, we lived down the hill. The department store that we shopped at most of the time was called Gibson. It was up the hill from my house. So we lived, our house, technically, or I lived at a, the kid was in a hole. They call it the hole. I lived off Main Street between Main and San Pedro. And any way you wanted to get it, leave my neighbor, leave my street, you had to climb. It was a slight hill. To get out of the, get out of my neighborhood, out, off my street. Top of the hill uh, was a store called Gibson's. 
one side was a grocery store, other side was a department store. And they had, you know, back then, everybody had everything in the store. The record, it was a record shop in there, insurance shop, a cleaners, uh, a little hamburger stand, some pinball machines. I remember pinball machines first hit this. I was in the, in the store every day. Uh, next door, to, then they had a department store with the clothes and the TVs and the radios. And it was a big store. It was a big store. And it, every once in a while, they would have carnivals in the parking lot. Oh, man, talking about, talking about having a good time at the carnival? They have big old carnival. The lot was huge. They'd have, I, I rode my mini bike up there a lot of times. But we also, that's why I rode my mini bike most of the time in the parking lot. Uh, then they had the carnival sometimes. It just was a, it was just a big spot, man. I mean, but it was local. Cause you had, then you had Zodis. Oh yeah, man, those, Zodis you know, was Zodis. the shit. In Long Beach, there was a Zodis. Zodis was the shit. Zodis was the shit. Um, difference between Zodis and Gibson. Gibson's when you bought shoes, they was tied together with, with a piece of plastic. Zodis, you might have got a box. Okay, you might got a box with a, some shoes from Zodis. Okay, White Front was another store. Okay, we had White Front um, off of uh, Imperial in Normandy. We had the White Front. Okay, and that was a very popular store at that time. We had a lot of department stores because back then, man, uh, wasn't a lot of, wasn't no malls. So all we had was department stores. So department stores served your every your every shopping need. Most of them had grocery stores and. Uh, some part of a grocery store, clothes store, whatever the case may be, and they serve different neighborhoods based on what they needed. And eventually, they got replaced by the shopping center in the mall. And uh, but man, shoot, um, we had we had a store back in the day called Western Surplus. This is for all the triple OGs. Triple OGs. Western Surplus was on Manchester. And Western, right across Manchester, this just, just north of Western, and it was an army surplus place, and it was a funky place, but it was a cool funky place, because literally, when I say army surplus, they would bring in um, army fatigues, navy clothes, uh, air Force, air force clothes. Sometimes guys would um would would, would um. You know, retire or whatever, and just leave their clothes. They was to buy them. They had uh, helmets, uh, German helmets, World War Two shit. They sold guns. They sold uh, <clears throat> ammunition, and it, it, it the one the one I was most popular with, most familiar with, uh, Western on Western in uh, Manchester. It uh, I think it I think it burnt down. They they raided the shit out of it during the Rodney King riot. <clears throat> it was right around the corner for everything I kicked off at. On Normandy and um, Florence, so that when the shit jumped off and the guy they wanted they wanted to arm themselves, they kicked the door in, man, and uh, robbed them of all their guns. In fact, Western Surplus used to have an advertising every week in the paper for advertising guns: thirty-eight, twenty-two, forty-five shotguns. First time I saw a street sweeper was in the was in the uh, um, advertising for. Um, for uh, Western Surplus. But it was just a cool spot. I remember when I was at ROTC at Centennial, I created a thing called the Drill Patrol. I wanted to have a drill team, but I wanted to wear a helmet. So we went to Western Surplus, me and the fellas, bought some white leggings and some he some uh, army helmets, painted them white, and we started marching. Shit, that was our shit. Yeah, Doc, it was a... And then um, if we really wanted to go across town, we catch the bus and go to Huntington Park. Ah, Pacific now, Ave. Pacific S, yes, right. Um, uh, Huntington Park, You back then, shit, get your ass in, get your ass out, okay? Get your black ass in, get your black ass out, all right? Huntington Park, at that time, was not very homely friendly, homely friendly, okay? And they had the one store that sold bomber jackets, and at one point in time, Bomber jackets was the shit. Okay, and me and my buddies caught the bus to uh, Huntington Park and bought all bought black bomber jackets because you couldn't find them nowhere in the hood. They was just they were just too popular. 
and uh, we had to get the fuck up out of there real quick. They got real, got, got, got a little nasty. Wasn't too different in the '90s when I was coming up. I do remember that about good old Huntington Park. Great memories there. Hey, uh, I want to talk about the Compton Swap Meet. When did the Compton Swap Meet go from Sears to the Compton Fashion Center, technically? And how did the city of Compton take that? Uh, it was Sears for a long time. Then it was vacant for a long time. Uh, I think it might have became the Swap Meet, man, in the early 80s, maybe late 70s. I really couldn't tell you, dude. Um, I know by '84. Um, I know by 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 the by the late early '70s, it was only oh, early '80s. It was only cracking, and my cousin ran the security over there. I remember when it opened up, it was a hellhole. It was a hellhole. Uh, it was a great idea, but it was a hellhole. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, because like I said before, essays, Crips, Blood, Samoans. Everybody needs draws. And at any given time, they can go to get a pair of draws. There it is. It's on. It's on. It was like that. It was on site at the swap meet. And they had to bring in Reggie Sr., my cousin, my cousin Philip Bailey, and a couple other guys to keep a lid on the swap meet. That, that was part of their detail to keep the swap meet from uh, keep, keep them in business, man. Because it was like that, dude. One thing I did, I never cared for the swap meet is that you only see it's, it's so segregated. It's one one group behind the register collecting the money, selling the goods, and one group or one or, or other group buying. It's only one group selling, but everybody else buying. Okay, I ain't racist. I'm just observing. Okay, one group is selling, and that that, that was with all the swap meets, even uh, um, uh, Delamo, uh, Flossen. One group selling, everybody else buying, and you very seldom saw anybody. You might, every once in a while you see they'll, they, they'll put a girl or somebody who was cool behind the counter, but uh, it it was it was very obvious who who was making the money. In fact, one of my theories one of my theories on um, on economic or hood economics is who made the most money during the drug era. Ooh, well, I can, I I know I I I would I can answer that, but it will probably sound racist. <laughs> Era. Brothers and sisters shot and killed, dodged the police, and did everything they could. Sold dope to their family members, anybody that wanted to buy it, to run to the swap meet and buy whatever articles they thought they needed to be cool the next day. Whether it was radios, white t shirts, tennis shoes, jeans, suits, clothes, hair, whatever you wanted to buy, sound system for your car, rims, accessories, baby food, whatever the case, whatever you thought you needed. Well, I mean, we got it. Okay, so you got to sell the dope and bring us the money. Okay, we're gonna clean it. We're gonna clean this money up because it ain't gonna be dirty when we get through it because you ain't gonna get it back no way. You'll never see it again. And that was one of the few things I learned. Once I learned the economics of the hood, how to how 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 the money in the hood only lasts what six hours, something like that. So, some some ridiculously no time. It turns Facts. over one time. It's out of here. And the swap meet is one. The swap meet is one of the main sources that swap meet. Also, uh, check cashing places. That was a big thing because check cash was back in the in the eighties when um, uh, they, they came out with check systems. Everybody was on check systems. You bounce a check, you going on check system. That's be how I know. And you couldn't have a checking account, but you got to pay bills. So the Knicks came in with the check with the Knicks check cashing, and they cash your check. And everybody start buying money orders. You buy a money order, and you get you know you, you sit there, and you buy all your money orders, make them out, and you bail them, buy the stamps and everything right there in Nick's. And that was the bank for the community for a long time. Then all of a sudden, you, you know, other 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 entities got Smart Square and uh, Square, and because uh, you first of all, used to be a time you couldn't get a credit card machine if you didn't have a credit card uh, a high enough uh, FICO score. You couldn't get a credit card machine. Actually, hmm. I know. I tried to get one back in 2008. And that's what they still had. You still had to have the basic machine, the swipe machine, and uh, a phone line, and all the other little shit. And um, I couldn't get one. My credit score was like four or five points too low. And they would give me one if they wanted to charge me a high-ass interest rate. I'm like, why am I 
Why do I need a credit a credit rating to have a credit card machine? I'm not charging myself. Anyway, uh, shortly after that, Square came out and changed the game. And the game has been changing ever since. Yeah, man. Funny story. Um, I had a son at a young age and something that really made me change my life was we were driving down the street one day and this is during my niggaverse years and my early 20, well, 20 when I had him, but um, it was a couple of years after he was born and um, he pointed at a check cashing place and he said, daddy, let's go to the bank. And I was like, damn, man, I got to change my life. My son is is incorporating the motherfucking bank with a check cash in place. And I'll be damned if I didn't get my life together shortly after that, dog. But they, they have disappeared. For the most part, they've pretty much disappeared, except for in some communities. I know a lot of the ones in Compton are gone. They disappeared left and right. Used to be a time you go to the check cash in place, do all your business, pay your light bill, your phone bill, uh, cash a check, and just do it all right there. In fact, at one point in time, you could there there were no um, uh, DWP Edison offices anywhere. Everything was done through the swap meet. Through That's the, right. Most check yeah. most most swap meets had check cashing um, uh, offices in there, and or a satellite office to pay your DWP DWP Edison or a phone bill, or even some even the gas bill. It was fucked up because of the third party. So if they didn't get that shit in process in time, your ass was stuck. You got to go in. You got to go get the money, cash the check, pay the bill. They're gonna run back to the house and call uh, the phone company with with the uh, receipt number to verify you paid the bill. Just changed. Yeah, man. Damn, different time, dude. Before we head on, I know we're not technically live. We were having some technical issues. This is a playback, but I want to remind everybody to hit that like button if you haven't already. And please hit that subscribe button if you are not tuned in to the channel. This is NWA Stories with Alonzo Williams. That is Alonzo Williams, the godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. I am Dusty Vision. We want to welcome you a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. Now, let's talk a little bit about New Year, Alonzo. What was Alonzo doing? You know, maybe let's let's pump it up to like teenager, you know, early 20s what was Lonzo what, what was cracking on New Year's Eve uh, with Lonzo Williams oh uh, man uh, at my house New Year's Eve my mama always made some nasty ass chitlins house smelling like ass like pig ass food. in fact the whole neighborhood smelled like pig ass cause uh, everybody <coughs> everybody from my neighborhood was from the south South Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, uh, Tennessee, wherever. My mama from Louisiana, my daddy from Mississippi. And chitlins and black eyed peas were the um, the delicacy of that era. And don't mess with that and get some hog head cheese. My old man loves hog head cheese and hot sauce. I ain't eating that checkerboard. Uh, no, dude, I'm not doing it, okay? That shit looked like it, it was just a, a mash of shit, like gelatin and all. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Anyway, um, a lot of times parents would always be home on on, on uh, New Year's Eve, and my dad and my uncles would go out back. Everybody bring their guns over, and they go out and shoot up in the air on New Year's Eve. That was the ritual. They go get ha- get halfway lit, take the more rusty ass guns out, and go over in the backyard Woo! and start shooting. I don't know what they thought they was hitting. I never understood that whole process of shooting guns in the air for New Year's Eve, but they still do it. They still do it today. And that was that was a New Year's Eve for us, man. Um, that, yeah, that was a New Year's. The New Year's Day, you know, we had, still had leftovers, still had toys or whatever, and the house was not as funky as it was the day before. But it was it was always cool, man. I can't remember having a real bad New Year's Eve as a kid. That's what's up. All right, let's talk about chitlins and pig feet and shit like that that we're, we've been known to eat throughout the years. You know, I've heard stories about slavery and things like that. Do you know the origins of why we eat everything on the pig and where that comes from? Yes. My daddy told me, he said, man, uh, my daddy grew up like he grew up in Mississippi. And, um, and it was part of the slave mistreatment because white folks ate the ham the ribs and uh, every, and everything else, and all they left was the feet, the tail, the guts, the head, okay, and the ears. 
So that's all you got. Now you already, you know, already slaughtered this damn animal and gave the master the best parts, the bacon, the ham, the ribs. You sitting there looking at a pile of stuff, hungry. You hungry, okay? You sitting there with, with and cut this pig. They over there barbecuing. Now your ass sitting over here with a with a with a saw or with a, a knife and hungry. So you try to figure out how we gonna make this work. And they sister sat down there and they oh, and they called it shit. The word chitlin is actually shit lining. Okay. We it just it just our vernacular over over years just called it chitlin. Wow, I didn't it's know that. Shit, it's shit lining. Okay. Because when, when they clean chitlin, they are literally removing the shit out of the out of the intestines. The chitlins are in pig intestines. The feet are the hooves of the pig. Pig got four of them. You get you get a couple of you get a couple of pig feet. Oh shit! You, you know you a happy camper. Um, pig tail. You know every pig got a tail, but they ain't got but one. So you got to kill a whole bunch of a whole bunch of pigs to get a, get get enough tails to make a meal. Um, and the, and the head cheese. They would just uh, boil the head. They would boil the head and the fat and the meat from the head. They take that once they drain the fat off of it to kind of compress it to make hog head cheese. That's what it basically is. What it is. Hog head cheese is the scraps that come off the head of the cheese, uh, off the pig. They compress it, and to some folks, it's a delicacy. My daddy loved it. Yeah, I never understand that one. Just the smell alone, just the smell alone of the chitlins, dog. I can't do it. No, okay, I can't do it. I, I never. I my sister, she's eating them. I've never ate a chitlin in my life. Mm-mm, I'm not doing it. Call me bougie, stuck up. What the fuck you want, guys? Call me what you want. I'm not eating that son of a bitch. I ain't never had pig feet. I don't eat animal organs, period. I don't eat liver. I don't eat uh, gut. I don't eat uh, uh, I don't eat yeah, do I eat limbs? Nah. I might eat a rib. That's about it. I don't do I don't eat, I don't do oxtails. Mm. I've had oxtails, I ain't that fond of them. I never ordered them in my life. They was round, they would look like they was cooked decently, I might have it. My old man, my mama, she loved. But when I was a kid, I loved neck bones, though. Neck bones was cow neck bones for the most part. I think I think they was cow neck bones, and uh, my mama cooked them up with some onions and whatever the case may be. I'd be a, a neck bone sucking son of a bitch. That's hilarious, dude. You know, twenty twenty three, man, it flew by. If you could sum up twenty twenty three in one word. What would that word be? Amazing. I love it. That's positive. Talk to me. May dude, I I um I got a call today from uh one of my state one of my buddies that work for the state senator's office. They're considering my my organization, the chamber, to be uh one of the uh, most, most uh, unsung businesses in the community. We've done so much. I mean, this year, dude, I've been in I've, the New York thing, the documentaries, the Easy Street, uh, going to Sacramento with, with the uh, Hip Hop Hall of Fame, the 50th anniversary. Um, it's just been amazing for me, dude. I mean, I hit the ground running and I ran so fast, I ran right through the whole year. And I look back, I'm like, damn, we did that. You know, and I didn't do it alone. I no, 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 no. I didn't do it alone. Okay, you, Kimberly, Nicole, Earl, Vicky, Brent, all, uh, Velo, uh, my whole, my whole team. You know, we, we, the, uh, I think, I think what it is, the team that that I work with, that we work with, has everybody got. It's, it's like it's like it's, it reminds me of that uh what's that big old that big old toy transformers the friends to come together and uh or uh go bots or they had that all voltron, together voltron voltron go bots voltron yeah okay everybody got their own thing but when it comes time to get out it's voltron time baby everybody step up let's do it everybody got their own lane everybody know their job and if you don't know you don't have a job you find one okay and that's what is that, that i saw that this year uh, oh, I, got, I can't forget about Kurt. Okay, can't forget about Kurt. So everybody I, that I've been associated with myself this year, we pulled off a lot of stuff, a lot of things um, that I did. In most cases, wouldn't be possible if we didn't we if we didn't have the money. 
We didn't have a lot of money. We still made things happen, man. A lot of what we, a lot of what we did was through resources and connections. And imagine if we had a couple of dollars, a couple of more dollars, I should say. Yeah, man. And that's why it's important to kids out there. Maybe this would be a good game segment, G-A-M-E, Grown Ass Men Enlightenment. But that's why it's important to always be professional. Um, you know, always work like someone's watching you. Always build good relationships. Keep them. Don't screw people. You know, you, you've been in the business for years, Lonzo. Talk to these kids about how keeping a good relationship can last a lifetime, bro. You know, um, one of my phone calls, phone call I got today, man. I didn't ask for this. Hey, man, I got. I'm doing so and so and so and so. I need to do this right here. Um, send me an invoice, huh? Okay. But again, it, these are relationships you develop over time, and you, you you can't forget people. You can't forget where certain things come from. But sometimes, every once in a while, I forget. But you got to remember and look out for people who, who look out for you. Relationships are everything, man. Relationships, in some cases, are more powerful than money. In some cases, relationships are more powerful than money, and 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 some in some cases. Uh, money don't have shit. Money don't mean shit if you've got a bad relationship. And and sometimes people will purposely block you because you think you can do something that you think your money can get you out of. Nah, I'm going I'm to prove, 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 prove a point to you right now. Your money don't mean shit over here. Now, now what you going to do? Okay? So I tell everybody, man, I always treat everybody with respect. And sometimes people, because I call everybody sir. I call them by their, by their last name. I call you, I call you Dusty. But a lot of times, my business, my, my business associates, what's up, Mr. So-and-so? How you doing, sir? And, you know, we are maybe the same age, and sometimes they may be younger. It ain't, it ain't about uh, trying to make somebody feel superior. It just you make them feel good. They don't mind taking your phone call. And that right there, that's something I learned. Um, you get more flies with sugar than you do with shit. I remember when uh, Jeffy was alive. When I, when I saw his name on my caller ID, my heart would drop every fucking day. Because <laughs> you never, you, you might get cussed out. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get your ass cussed out or something is wrong. And you don't know, you know, the situation. But when Frank called me, and I don't, I don't have, I don't have, his son called me, I don't have the same, I don't have the same feeling. Because he and I have a different relationship. Uh, when some people call, I'm looking forward to them. And, when they answer the phone, I make people feel good. Hey, man, how the hell you doing? How your kids? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's, that's, that's shoot the shit first. Okay? And then we're going to talk business. You know, if we if it, this is a real quick conversation. But yeah, man, relationship to everything. And you know what? Call people to check on them. You ain't got to want something. Then just call the person up. Man, hey, man, how you doing? I was thinking about you. And people do it. People did it. Do the holidays. That's why you get Christmas cards. The Christmas cards do the same thing that a phone call to do. Christmas cards same, 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 serve the same purpose. They say, hey, how you doing? I thought about you doing the holidays. Here's, I spent 29 or 49 cents on you to make, uh, to, uh, you know, to think about you. People do the same thing with texting. Holidays. Hey, how you doing, man? Happy, happy holidays. You and your family, you, know, you got to return them, call them black, whatever the case may be. But just reaching out, let people know that you thought about them is uh very important especially in business in relationships facts dude and that ladies and gentlemen is some grown ass man enlightenment first of all happy holidays everybody no matter what holiday you celebrate i don't care happy holidays feel the spirit you ain't got to buy nobody nothing just feel the spirit of giving if they, if they ever give them a good hello give them a give them a, give them a handshake or give them a hug it's still giving folks that's all you got to do. So just give somebody a, a, a good hello or a good hug or a good handshake. Make them feel special that day. Uh, like I say every week before I go, for those who don't who never heard of me, I'm the first one to put Dr. Dre in the surgery. Stuck ice cube in the freezer till he got cold on the eve at the dark 50-yard line Super Bowl. In the movie Straight Outta Compton, they played me as a straight hater of rap. Don't believe that Hollywood bullshit because it was all cap. My history goes deeper than most of y'all will ever know. Just remember that NWA stands for now without Alonzo. Peace. Happy Peace. holiday, folks.